All right, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, call her law, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakak Wadash. All right, double honest to the elders and apostles, a great millstone and salutation to you, brothers, pushing his word in truth and sincerity. All right, got another video. All right, it was inspired by, let's go to the book of John 15 and 1, and I'm going to read that. Uh, John 15 and 1, it reads, um, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. And this is Yahweh Shah speaking, all right? We know that according to the scriptures, when Yahweh Shah spoke, he, he spoke of himself being the door, all right, the, the shepherd, all right, the true vine, okay? Yahweh Shah being the true vine, it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, all right, he taketh away. Yahweh, the heavenly father that he's referencing, all right, being the husbandman. All right. And if you know anything about um, uh, uh, tilling or, um, you know, managing um, a, 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 a tree, you know, that brings forth fruit. All right. He's uh, represent. He's um, Shalakia. I want to say that he's um, basically uh, referencing agriculture or husbandry. All right. It says every branch in me that beareth not fruit. He taketh away and every branch that bear fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. OK, what does what the fruit represent? The fruit represents the men, the true believers. And when you look up this word purgeth. All right. We'll look up the word purgeth. Strong's 25. Oh, eight. Strong's G, 2508. Cathyro. 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 So it says to cleanse. It says of filthy, of filth and purity. To prune trees and vines from useless shoots. Mm. Useless shoots. All right, that didn't give me anything. Let's go back. So it says, um, I'll read it again, verse 2. It says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth forth that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Okay, Yahweh Shah is the vine. All right. And if you go off the vine, your fruit, you can't bear fruit. All right. Your fruit, <laughs> basically, your fruit is going to be corrupted. All right. Yahweh Shah is the epitome. Okay. What is the word epitome? And I just said, Yahweh Shah, a, a pity me. Let's see if I can find it up in uh, I want to make sure I use the words correctly. The word epitome. And yeah, that is correct. This is a person or thing that is a perfect example of a particular quality of type. Right? So, like I was saying, Yahweh Shai is the epitome of our, our ministry. Okay. That's why he's the true vine. All right. And what I wanted to get into in this video is that he would be a stone of stumbling. All right. A rock of offense. Now, let's go to the book of I'm going to come back to John 15, but I'm going to um, go to the book of. See, Matthew 21. And uh, I'll, I'm going to jump down like 31. All 
This is uh, uh, Matthew 21 and 31. It says, whether of them twain did the will of the, his father, they say unto him, the first Yahweh Shah saith unto them, verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of Yahweh before you. All right, this is Yahweh Shah rebuking all right, the men that came unto them and uh, posed a question to them. When you read up, the chief priests and the elders came unto Yahweh Shai, and they were told that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of Yahweh before, before them. Right, and they were the ones that were keeping the law. All right, they were the ones that were uh, teaching the people. They had the 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 um, authority over the people. And Yahweh Shai told them that publicans and and harlots, all right, go into the kingdom before them. All right. It says, for John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believe him, believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. Even when they seen the miracles, that they seen the works of Yahweh Shai, they, they didn't repent. And same thing is in motion in these times now. You know, you have men that are speaking up against the true men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. The the um the men that reverence our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. And you have men that speak up against us. We we speak of the grace, the faith. I mean, that was a big thing. Because you have certain minds in, in the world of Israel that believes that the law is going to save you. Uh uh this discounting all right the law of faith all right which is in Yahweh Shai which is through Yahweh Shai and if you body in the and if you abide in the vine that is Yahweh Shai Yahweh the Heavenly Father is going to purge you all right it says um this is the in particular this is the parable that I wanted to bring out it says here another let me read 32 again. It says, For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. All right, so you had the harlots and the publicans. When they seen the work of Yahweh Shah, the people, they believed the work of Yahweh Shah. They believed that he was the son of man. But you had you know, the chief, the wicked chief priests and the, and, the, and the wicked elders. All right. They uh, wanted to uh, overthrow uh, 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 the mindset of the people. They didn't want his fame to be uh, uh, displayed abroad for fear that they would lose their position. All right. And it's the same thing now. You, you have men that won't acknowledge the true prophets because out of fear of, of this world that they're going to lose their position you know, what reputations that they have uh, 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 gained amongst the people in this world, in this cosmos of Israel in these times. Right. But let me read this parable real quick and I'm going to go back to uh, John 15. It says here, another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and dig the wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits, fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. All right. And in this parable, those servants, OK, they represent the prophets. All right. And ultimately, the, the, the prophet, the, that husbandman, which represents Yahweh Shai. All right. I mean, the husband rep represents the husband represents the heavenly father. His son represents Yahweh Shai. All right. That he said, 
But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord thereof of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the, the fruits, the fruits in their season. Yahweh Shah saith unto them, did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of Yahweh shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. All right. So let me let me go back uh, to the book of uh, John 15. And then I'm going to go to another scripture and I'm probably going to end the video quickly. But uh, back in John 15 and uh, 5, it says. Verse four it says, abide in me and I in you. This is Yahweh Shah speaking as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more no more can ye except ye be abide in me i am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing so without yahweh shah you you can't do nothing all right you're not going to even be able to uh keep the fruit that you have or that you think that you have all right, and ultimately, all of this stuff is going to be brought forth to the forefront because we're coming in the time. Esau, get ready, cut the internet. And this internet thing has become the world for many. All right, people's lives, people's livelihoods are made off of the internet and off of these videos that they do. People are captivated. All right, people spend a lot of time watching videos and seeking um, after some type of understanding. We're coming into a time where Esau... You know, he's he's going to um, shut this whole thing down. All right. It says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are, are burned. All right. So that, that those branches all right, that are going to be cast away. All right. They, they, they're, they're withered. All right, men gather them to be burned. All right, they, they're not producing. All right. And that goes for these doctrines out here, these, these doctrines that are not of Yahweh Shai. All right, the believers in them, okay, the believers in these doctrines, all right, they're going to, they, basically they're withering away. All right, they're going to be cast away, they're going to be burned. All right. It says, if ye, they're not going to abide that day, that day of the Lord uh, is going to be revealed by fire. That's what the scriptures speak of. All right. That day shall be re revealed by fire. You know, you have men building work, different works of wood and stone. You know, it says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. All right. Especially in the time of, uh, of Jacob's trouble. All right. That's what we're looking for. That's why it's uh, very important to uh, teach the doctrine correctly in Yahweh Bashim Shai, so that when you're in need, you can ask of the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shai and receive it because you've done works pleasing unto the Heavenly Father and his son. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. All right. Now, let me go, let me see, John 8 and 32. Let's see what that say. And then I got another scripture that I want to bring up. Uh, yeah, John 8 and 31. 
It says, then said Yahweh to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So you have to continue in Yahweh word. All right. But how can you continue in Yahweh word if you don't believe in Yahweh and you believe that you're going to be saved through the law? You don't believe in the faith of Yahweh Shai to speak the words of Yahweh Shai unto your deliverance of your soul. All right. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. All right. This knowledge, this understanding, this is what makes you free. All right. And Yahweh Shai. All right. Now let's go to this real quick. Now, Yahweh Shah was referencing the book of Isaiah, and then Peter referenced, okay, uh, Peter was rep referencing uh, Isaiah. Yahweh Shah always, there's multiple occasions where Yahweh Shah, where Yahweh Shah um, made reference to the prophets, choosing, um, Proving that the, the that the law and the prophets wasn't done away with. Uh, Isaiah 8 and 13, it says, Sanctify the Lord of himself, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Because ultimately the judgment comes from the Heavenly Father. All right, and he should be feared, he should be a, a dread unto you if you're not teaching the, the word of Yahweh Bashim al Shah correctly. But he's ultimately going to show himself to be a fear and a dread, man. Can you imagine? You got these guys. Because this judgment is going to come suddenly. All right. It's going to come suddenly upon um, upon Israel. All right. And we're in the times now that at any day, there could be something that can happen to, that can change the course of history. Esau, Edom. All right. And he shall be for a sanctuary. And he shall be for a sanctuary. All right, which he is to, to the men, to, to the true believers, the one that are in the vine. All right. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So he's become a trap. All right. Something that people uh, uh, fall. Right. Verse 15 says, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. All right. And this is what's happening now. You're witnessing Yahweh Shah being a stone and stumbling because people are not following the true doctrine of Yahweh Shah, who is the true vine. All right. And the father being the husbandman. All right. But I don't want to make this video too long. I got to go back. Um, Lord's will was edifying. Uh, I was meditating on it. Um, and I just wanted to put together some scriptures, you know, to go around um, our Lord being the truth.